Well, I love the movies. Welcome to the biggest movie event of the year. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have a great night, ladies and gentlemen. And the Oscar goes and the Oscar to Oscar goes to Nicholson, Nick Ledger, Curious Case of Benjamin Button, The Dark Knight, Sean Penn, Slumdog Millionaire. Thank you so much. You guys ready for the message this morning? Yeah. All right. Uh, this morning, uh, the movie that we're going to be using as an illustration is a movie called Chappie. Uh, how many guys have seen or heard of Chappie? Chappie! <laughs> Marie's just a little too excited about Chappie. <laughs> Chappie! <laughs> she turned into like a five-year-old for a second. Um, oh, you're so sweet, and I just made fun of you, and I feel bad. <laughs> I take it back. She's not a five-year-old. She's an amazing woman. Um, but Chappie is a movie about this, uh, this computer programmer, and he designs the world's first artificial intelligence, and he puts it inside of a robot. And when he does that, it's the first time that anything like this has ever happened. And, and wh what's going on is, is this movie takes place in South Africa, and in this movie there's a lot of crime going on. So they have these police robots, so the criminals aren't able to do any crimes any longer because the police robots are so powerful and so quick. So all the criminals are pretty much backed into a corner. They can't rob anything, they can't do bank heists or anything like that any longer. And so uh, this, this man that works with those police robots designs artificial intelligence and puts it inside one of the police robots. And then when he does that, it's like the robot is a brand new baby. It's born, it doesn't know how to speak, it just kind of like crawls around on the ground and they have to teach it things. It, now it learns very quickly. It, it grows and it adapts and its intelligence grows swiftly, but it does need to be taught because it doesn't know anything. It's completely innocent, completely naive, and has no information on how the world works. So its creator is trying to teach it how to be a good robot and trying to teach it how to do well. But in the middle of this, uh, they get hijacked by some criminals, and the criminals capture the robot and want to use it for bad purposes. And so that's the clip that we're going to see this morning as they go ahead and play it. All right, so in this scene, uh, Chappie, the child robot, was kidnapped by some gangsters, some robbers. And in this scene, the, the, the one gangster is uh, calling himself his father. He's saying, I'm your daddy, you have to listen to me. And he's trying to teach uh, this child robot how to uh, shoot things because they want to use him to rob a bank. They want to use him to do a heist. And, but the thing about it is, is he's trying to teach Chappie how to shoot and how to be a gangster and how to be a criminal and how to do wrong things. But Chappie remembers, no wait, my dad told me, my creator told me that I'm not supposed to to do these things. I'm not supposed to do wrong. I'm not supposed to harm people. I'm not supposed to shoot people. I'm not supposed to use guns. My creator told me this and I know that it's immoral and I know that it's wrong. And so right there we see that Chappie is resisting a negative influence on his life. But then what happens? How, how many of you guys, you ever had somebody try to influence you negatively? Or you ever try to, you ever have a situation where you're being influenced to do something that's wrong and, and you guys stood up against it? Does it ever just stop there? You know, does it ever just stop? Does, does negative influence ever just say, oh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up and I'm going to go away because obviously your fortifications against influence are too impenetrable. So I'm just going to leave you to be a good person and I'm not going to try and influence you any longer. No, what happens? It changes tactics, doesn't it? So they realize, wait a minute, he's been told that he can't use a gun. How do we work around this? How do we continue to influence him to do bad things? If he's already set against doing this, what we do is we change our tactics because we are going to influence him. So instead of bringing out guns, they bring out knives, which his creator had not had the opportunity to warn him against. So he, not knowing, was able to be influenced to do wrong. Are you guys following with me this morning? And so we see that this robot wanted to do the right thing, but because of the influences around him, it changed why he was created. The purpose for which he was created was to do good, but because of the influences that surrounded him, he was influenced to do something that went against his very purpose and intention. And I'm here to tell you this morning that that's something that we all can fall prey to in our lives. Am I right? Whether you like it or not, for better or for worse, you are influenced by those that are closest to you. Would you guys agree with me on that? Whether you like it or not, for better or for worse, you are influenced by those closest to you. There's a, a, a famous uh, speaker, his name's Jim Ron, and he made this statement. He said that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. Now that goes back to the law of averages. So 
If we are the average of the five people that we spend the most time with, they are the people that are pouring into us, that are developing us, that are influencing us in our lives, wouldn't it make sense to be careful about the people that we place around us? And ask ourselves this question, this question, who is influencing me in my life and how am I being influenced? We look at Chappie in this story. He's standing there and he's being influenced to do something that's wrong. And they're butting up against his moral boundaries and they keep on butting up. Now, Chappie at some point should have said, listen, you guys are trying to instruct me to move in a way that goes against the instructions of my creator. And I'm here to tell you the world is full of people that are trying to influence you in a direction contrary to the direction that you were created for. You guys realize that you were created not to live a sinful life, not to live a life full of wrongdoing, but you were created to live a life of the, reflecting the glory that God has for you. You guys with me on that? You guys were created for a purpose. You guys were created to do something unique, to do something that brings honor to God's name and not something that brings dishonor to him or yourself. But we surround ourselves with influences and so seldom do we ever stop and ask ourselves, are these people that I have allowed to be around me, are these top five people really people that I want to become like? How many of you guys, you, let, let's be honest, you have a friend and you would really not like to be like that friend? Yeah, anybody? Anybody? You got a friend, you're like, oh man, that's Freddy. That is Freddy. Uh, he's fun, but I don't want to be like Freddy. Freddy's messed up. Freddy crazy. Okay? We all know somebody like that. This is like, you know, maybe they're a good time. Maybe they're a fun person to be around. Maybe they're so crazy that they make your life a little bit more exciting, you know? But you don't want to be like them because they're just so nuts. Yeah. Man, how many guys know if you spend a lot of time with Freddy, you're going to start doing the things that Freddy does? Am I right? If there's somebody in here named Freddy, I apologize. I'm not talking about you. This is a, a fictitious Freddy. <laughs> but we are all influenced, whether you like it or not, for good or for bad, by the people that we spend the most time with. And I want us to look at the Bible. This is found in the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verses 24 and 25. If you have your Bible, I want you to raise it up in your hands. You raise it up in your hands if you got a Bible. Okay. Everyone, if somebody next to you is not raising something up in their hands, elbow them in the ribs and say, shame on you, this is church. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, don't do that. that. That would be mean. See, I'm influencing you. Um, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 24 and 25. It says, make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with a wrathful man, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a trap. So right here, the Bible is telling us, don't hang around with people that have explosive rage, lest you learn their ways and become like them. Lest you learn their ways and become like them. You guys, you guys ever had that happen? You guys ever just be like, like a nice, peaceful person, and then you just have somebody that's always blowing up all the time, and you find yourself blowing up? Yeah. How many of you guys, okay, like, don't raise your hand for this question, but how many guys, before y'all got married, you all were just saints, and then you got married, and then you, you took on, like, the negative characteristics of your spouse, and now you're just always, like, angry, and like, like every single time you guys get in a fight, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, baby, I'm coming like you. I don't, you know, like. <laughs> so, so some of you guys, <laughs> so, uh, I see a brother over here wiping a sweat from his head, looking at his wife. <laughs> but we take on those characteristics, and the Bible is warning us, if you're hanging around an angry person, a wrathful person, somebody that explodes in anger, you're going to adopt their qualities. And it says, be careful lest you fall into a trap, because I'm here to tell you, you guys, the influences you have around you can and oftentimes are a trap. Are they not? You guys ever be hanging around with somebody thinking you had it on lock and you weren't going to fall into what they're doing and then all of a sudden it just snapped? And there all of a sudden now you have these qualities manifesting in your life and you didn't even realize it because you fell in a trap. You fell in a trap. They call it a trap because it's a trap, okay? You don't expect to walk into it, okay? You don't expect to fall into a trap. And you adopt the qualities and the characteristics of people around you, whether you like it or not. No, not me, Pastor Daniel. I would never adopt the qualities of people around me. I would never, I would, I would, I would never adopt negative characteristics. Yes, you would. You guys ever find yourself like doing something like, that, 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 like your parents did, you know, that you swore you would never do? Yeah. Ever? Oh my gosh, I'm my mom, you know? 
You ever have that happen? When I was a kid, my dad, okay, whenever my dad got really, really mad, he would do this thing, and I always couldn't stand it, but he would get really, really mad. It was like he couldn't contain his anger, and he couldn't wait to let you know how mad he was. He would be like, Daniel, you know? <laughs> and he would do this, like, this thing, like he was high-fiving rapidly in the air, like, no, you know? And he would just, yeah, like, like electric shock therapy. And every time he did it, I just wanted to be like, punch your hand, punch your hand, punch your hand, stop it! Put your hands in your pockets and yell at me normal, you know? <laughs> and he would always do it. And literally, like, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I'm sitting down with Roman, and Roman, like, just does something just crazy. I'm like, Roman! <laughs> I'm like, oh, no! <laughs> I put my hands all the way down in my pockets. I'm like, come here so daddy can yell at you right now. <laughs> I will never, you get, when you're a kid, you look at stuff like that, and you're like, I will never take on that characteristic. I will not do that. I will never become that. I will never allow that to find its way into my life. That's annoying. That's crazy. But as we grow up, the people that we are around influence us for good or for bad. And all of you guys, as you look at, some of, some of you guys that are now parents, and you're looking at your parenting characteristics or the way that you raise your children, you realize that you have taken on some of your parents' good characteristics, but man, you also taken on some of your parents' bad characteristics, right? Some of those stuff, you're like, man, I need to make sure that I do that the way that my mom did because that made me feel special. You're doing that now with your kids, but then you're doing some of that stuff, you're like, that used to drive me crazy. And you're doing that with your kids now, you're like, why do I do it? Because you've been influenced. You learned their ways. You fell into a trap. The Bible warns you about it. You just thought that you were better than that. You didn't think it was possible. You told yourself that you were better than that. Am I right? 1 Corinthians 15, it says these words, etch this into your minds. It says, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good. It's on the screen. <laughs> Marie's the only literate person. Bad company corrupts good. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts. Do not be deceived. <laughs> Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Why does it say do not be deceived? What does being deceived mean? It means failure to admit something is not true. Failure to admit something is not true. You know you have no money in your bank account and you go to Taco Bell to buy yourself a nacho grande. And you swipe it and they say, I'm sorry, your, your card has been declined. No, swipe it again. No, your car has been declined. Swipe it again. Okay. Oh, look at that. Your car was declined again. No, swipe it again. Do not be deceived. You broke. <laughs> you broke. Do not be deceived. Failure to admit the truth. You broke. You're not eating a nacho bel grande. You got to scrape some quarters together. Maybe you could get yourself a gordita, but you are not eating that nacho bel grande. You ain't got no cash. Do not be deceived. That's not happening today. Do not be deceived. Do not fail to admit that bad company will, not maybe, will corrupt good morals. Amen. Are you with me, church? Do not be deceived, meaning do not fool yourself. A lot of times we see that do not be deceived like, oh, that's right. I'm not going to let nobody deceive me, man. Don't let yourself deceive yourself, Amen. right? I'm not going to let nobody come inside my circle. I'm very vigilant. I'm like a watcher on the wall. I'm making sure that no bad company comes inside my circle. Do not deceive yourself. Because if you deceive yourself, all of a sudden you'll start letting anybody inside that circle. People that you never thought that you would ever associate with influences that you never desired in your life are now present in that circle. Because not that they deceived you, but that you allowed yourself to be deceived. Amen? Do not be deceived. No matter where the deception comes from, whether it comes from without or within, do not be deceived because bad company will corrupt good morals. Can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah? You hang around with bad company and you will be corrupted no matter if you have good morals. Notice that? It says bad company corrupts good morals. 
It's, that's not even, it's, it's, the, the implication there is not even that bad company makes bad people badder. You notice that? It's not that bad company around people that are already jacked up will continue to further jack them up. It's bad company corrupts good morals. Oh, I'm a good person. I'm not going to fall into that. I'm not going to make those mistakes. I'm not going to go down that road. You don't understand. I have good morals. No, bad company going to corrupt your good morals. And then you're going to be bad company for somebody else. It doesn't matter the morals you have. We look at Chappie in that clip. This was an innocent robot, okay? He had good morals. He was, an, he was like a child. He was sweet. And bad company began to corrupt him. How many of you guys have ever known, like you look at like any baby, like any child, like some of them are just born evil, you know? But like most children are sweet and innocent, but as they go through life, they start learning negative characteristics, am I right? They start being influenced by their surroundings, by the people in their lives. <laughs> I remember there's, there's a beautiful little girl we have in the church named Shailene, and I remember when she was a baby, <laughs> She's the sweetest little baby in the world, just like so cute and adorable. She's still cute and adorable, but she was, you know, baby. Um, yeah, so sweet, so sweet. And then she would get around my bad influence brother and, uh, you know, her brother-in-law, Manny, and they would teach her nursery rhymes, but they would change the lyrics to be like really, really bad things, you know? Like the itsy bitsy spider became a drug dealer or something like that. And they would like teach her these like really, really bad lyrics. And so she's like walking around like, yo, the itsy bitsy spider sold a gram of crack, you know? Like, <laughs> he's a little kid. And I remember looking at her mom's face. Her mom's like, what are you doing to my baby? She's a sweet, innocent little girl. And they're teaching her about the itsy bitsy spider's negative nightlife, you know? Like, it was awful. Shame on you. <laughs> But she had good morals and she was corrupted. And we look at this clip and Chappie had good morals, but he was corrupted. All they had to do, all that they had to do was just change the name. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, Chappie, we want you to shoot people and murder them. I can't shoot people. My creator told me not to. Oh, well, let's just throw knives at them until they go to sleep permanently. Okay. And that's the way that negative influences work, man. They don't stop. They just change the name. They try a different door. They try a different approach. They repackage the same garbage and present it to you with a new song. Are you with me? Do not be deceived. Bad company will corrupt good morals. I don't care how good your morals are. You can be corrupted. And we fool ourselves into thinking because of our morals, because of our standards, that it's impossible for us to be corrupted. And we deceive ourselves, do we not? Amen. Oh, I can be in a relationship with an unbeliever and we won't fall into sin because I have good morals. Well, the Bible warns you against that. Oh, I can watch this movie with graphic nudity in it and not uh, feel lustful. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. You're going to get corrupted. That's going to continue to escalate. Are you with me? Oh, I can, I can do this. I can go down this road. I can uh, venture into these uh, networks. I can go here. I can do, it'll be okay. It'll, I know where I stand with God. Do not be deceived, church. And we rationalize. Isn't it amazing what we rationalize at times? Isn't it amazing the, the, the kind of stories that we will create for ourselves in order to do the things that we want to do but that we know we ought not do? Am I right? And we will allow ourselves to enter into situations that we never thought possible because we are allowing ourselves to be deceived. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts in spite of your morals, in spite of your strength. No, Pastor Dan, you don't understand how strong of a Christian I am. I am too strong to fall. Man, Samson was the strongest man that ever lived, and he was taken out by a woman in a nap. Are you stronger than Samson? Are you stronger than Samson? A man of God, a Nazarite, set apart at birth. Strongest man that ever lived. And he got taken out because he rationalized. He allowed himself to be deceived by a woman. Oh, it's okay. I'm going to go on with Delilah. Bro, gentlemen, you know any woman named Delilah, run. 
bad news. If you were named Delilah, I apologize, but you need to have a conversation with your parents and go down to a courthouse. <laughs> you know Delilah, you run. Oh, I can go stay with Delilah? She's a Philistine? Somebody I'm not supposed to be affiliated with? I'm going to go in and put my head on this woman who actually happened to be a harlot's lap? That's a good place to hang out as a man of God. <laughs> Can you guys imagine me? Can you guys Im imagine me for a moment? I'm like, listen, you guys, I'm going to go down to the ghetto. I'm going to go down to one of the uh, places where I can find a prostitute. I'm going to go down to a street corner at midnight. I'm going to find me uh, a prostitute. And I'm not going to do anything wrong, but I'm just going to pay her and put my head on her lap and sleep for a little while. <laughs> Ashley will understand. <laughs> We're not going to do nothing wrong. I'm just going to take a nap. I heard they have comfy laps. I'm just going to take a nap. Can you imagine? Every single person in this church will be like, what? What did you just say? What came out of your mouth? It's just a lap and a nap. No, it's deception. It's deception. If Samson was not strong enough to stand against deception, neither are you. One of my favorite passages in the Bible is found in Galatians 2, and it says, if you see a brother stumble carefully, carefully, and gently lead him back to the right path, but be careful lest you also fall into the same temptation, for you're not that important. You're not greater than your brother that already stumbled in that area of temptation. So don't think, I'm just going to go up and help him out because I'm stronger than he was. Be careful when you help them out. Not saying that you ignore the brother that's stumbling. You do want to help them out, but be careful as you do that you don't fall into the same temptation. Am I right? Be careful. And I'm here to tell you, church, just because you wear the banner of Christianity does not make you impervious to deception or influence. Are you with me? Do not be deceived. Some of you guys are already deceived, am I right? Some of you guys are already deceived. Let, let's, let's be honest. Let's be real in these United States of America, okay? In a church this size, it's, in the church this size, it's very likely that at least one of you is going to go home and get high tonight. It's likely that that's going to happen. It's likely. I'm not judging. I'm just going to, like, just statistically speaking. It is likely that one of you is going to go home and look at some pornography tonight. It is likely that that is going to happen. It is likely that some of you are going to have thoughts about somebody that is not your spouse. It is likely that some of you are going to go home and use language that you would hope your pastor never heard. It is likely that some of you guys are already deceived. Am I right? Am I right, church? Some of you are already deceived. Do not be deceived. Do not allow the influences of the world to creep into your life. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind in Christ Jesus. Do not be deceived, church. And a lot of times we as Christians like to act like all of this deception is happening outside the walls of the church. I guarantee you that many of you guys are deceived right now. Right now, to varying degrees, some of you guys are seriously and deeply deceived. Some of you guys are beginning the path of deception. The, 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 the fact remains, though, that many people in this room right now are deceived. Some of you guys are deceived and in, in influenced to be religious, you know? Be so legalistic that there's no love of God in your life. It's possible. A great many of us, I believe, are deceived. Let's wake up this morning. Are you guys ready to wake up this morning, church? Even Christians need to understand that Christians themselves can be the bad company. Do you realize that? Christians themselves can be the bad company. When we read that verse, uh, do not be deceived, bad company, corrupts good morals. Like, I gotta, I gotta, get, rid, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get, get rid of all my secular friends. <laughs> all my friends that aren't Christians. I gotta, I gotta call up to, uh, Freddie, the, especially Freddie. Uh, let him know that no longer can we hang out. You know, I got to call up uh, Jacqueline. I got to send some texts as soon as I get out of service. No, uh, Christians can be bad company too. Am I right? Amen. Perfect opportunity to say something about me, y'all. I was just waiting for somebody to say, well, Pastor Daniel. 
I had to come back ready and everything. But <laughs> we're going to read another passage of scripture. This is in 1 Corinthians 5, 11. It says, but now I am writing you that you must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother, read Christian. Amen? Amen. But is sexually immoral or greedy or an idolater or a slanderer or a drunkard or a swindler with such a man do not even eat. Ouch! That sounds pretty harsh, doesn't it? Why can't we eat with them? They're our brothers, right? Why can't we eat with them? Because they will influence you. Do not be deceived. It's even more dangerous. You guys ever hang around with somebody that was a Christian and they just start doing something? You're like, you guys ever have that happen? What did you just say? Don't be deceived. They will corrupt you. Now, that's not to say that you need to abandon them, but you need to either push them in the right, or the right direction or stand up. If you're in the middle of a meal and somebody starts slandering one of your other brothers and sisters, be like, hey, listen, we're not going to do that here. Do I need to leave? Because I'm not going to be a part of this conversation. I just came up from Canada, and uh, I was with a family that I grew up with. They're a, a beautiful family. They were missionaries over in Fiji, and their dad is somebody that I deeply respect. He's one of the most humble men I've ever seen in my entire life. And there was a wedding going on, and uh, one of the people in the wedding uh, was being a little difficult, and some people at the table started talking about this person, and they tried to bring the dad into the conversation about this person. He goes, I will not speak negative about them. That's not happening. I'm not going to go there. This conversation needs to stop. I'm not going to break bread with slander. This ends. And the conversation stopped. You see that? He wasn't going to be deceived. Oh, you know what? This person is being difficult. And I, I have a story. You know? I, I got to Oh, wait until you hear what I got. Oh, it's okay because they deserve it. No, I will not be deceived. This is slander. And it stops right here. Or I'm not breaking bread with you. Are you with me, church? Anybody feel convicted this morning? <laughs> Nobody says amen, but everyone's like looking at somebody, you know? <laughs> I, I, seriously, I heard one amen, and I saw three of these. <laughs> Man, y'all already deceived. <laughs> Why can't we break bread with them? Because they draw others into their folly. Uh, the Apostle Paul understood that some of the biggest potential enemies to spiritual growth were not those outside of those church engaged in blatant sin, but those inside of it, engaged in hidden sin. Amen? Don't be deceived. It comes in all forms. It's not just outside. Man, it's inside too. Do not be deceived. And, 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 and here's the thing, you guys, is influence is not just who you hang out with. Do you realize that this morning? Influence is not just who you hang out with. Influence is influence itself. Amen? And it comes in all shapes and in all forms. It's all around us. Do not be deceived. It comes from every form. Some of you guys are influenced to wear the clothes that you wore this morning. Amen? There's a pastor that I really, really like named Carl Lentz, and he kind of dresses like this. So whenever I go out and buy clothes, I'm like, oh, that looks like something he would wear. I'm going to wear I was influenced to wear this. I didn't even realize that. I put it on and I got here. I'm working on this. I'm like, oh, influence, you know? We're influenced in all forms, all around us. And it's not just by people. It's influence itself. It's in pop culture. It's in the media. It's in everything. There's influence all around us. When I was up in Canada, I was... I was um, like I said, I was hanging out with a family that, was, that are dear, dear friends of mine. They're, I, I call them my Canadian family. Um, they're, they're like a second family to me. They're a beautiful family. I love and adore them. But they had their youngest son. His name is Caleb. And I grew up with them. I've known this family for over 15 years. And I've known Caleb since he was a little kid. Like, I'm talking a little kid. Okay? And he was a sweet little kid, man. We used to play hockey uh, in Fiji. We were the only people to play hockey. We were like playing hockey and people would be looking at us like, what in the world stick game is that, you know? Like, because Canadians, you know, like hockey. And so we, were, we would do that and we would play together. He was a great kid and he was a great friend. He was a lot younger than me, but I always liked him. He was like my little brother, you know what I mean? And I'd just like grab him and give him noogies and, and give him wedgies and stuff like, you know, older brother to little brother things. And he was just a great, great kid. And then my family left Fiji before their family did. And... Uh, and, and I started hearing about how he was being influenced. 
And, and when I was up there in Canada, I was talking to him about where he went in his life. And, and I'll show you guys a picture of, of, uh, of, of, the, of Caleb real quick. We're going to throw it up on the screen um, as, as it goes up there. So this is, the one on the top is, is a picture of us when we left Fiji. And in the bottom in the orange shirt is Caleb as a young boy. And then this is Caleb now, and we were up at the wedding just this past week. And so I've known him for a very, very long time. And as I was talking to Caleb, uh, he was telling me about what happened in his life. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, when I was a teenager in Fiji, I used to rap, okay? I used to rap. I had my own rap CD and stuff like that. I was called the Kingpin. Um, that was my rap name. Uh, I wore a lot of bandanas. Uh, but I did Christian rap, and, and when, we, when I was young, I remember Caleb, whenever I would rap, Caleb would just like idolize me, and he would come up to me and like ask me to teach him how to rap, and I remember sitting down with him, helping him write his first rap song, and, and I remember him telling me, man, I'm going to be a rapper just like you, I'm going to be a Christian rapper, and when I was leaving Fiji, he's like, man, I'm going to take your place, and, and I'm going to rap, and I'm going to do all this stuff while we're gone, but then uh, when, he, when that godly influence left from his life, then he started looking uh, at other influences, he started looking at secular rappers, and started hearing the message that they were telling uh, about the lifestyle that you needed to live. It needed to be a lifestyle of, of drinking, of drugs, of uh, crime, and, and of things like this. And he started listening to those influences in media, and they started influencing his perspective, and it started to corrupt his good morals. Are you with me? It started to corrupt him. And he went back to Canada with his family to visit, and he got to Canada, and he started hanging out with some people that reflected the influences in that music that he was listening to. He started finding people that were in that life, saying, yo, teach me how to live this life, because if I want to be a successful rapper, this is how I have to look. This is how I have to dress. These are the kind of tattoos I need to put on my body. These are the, the words that I need to speak and, and the drugs that I need to take. Teach me how to do this. And they, uh, people began to influence him in addition to the media that was influencing him. And finally, his parents go to take him back to Fiji, and at 16 years old, they go to the airport, and he says, I'm not getting on the plane with you guys. I'm staying here. I'm not going back to a life of, of missionary work. I'm not going back to a life serving God. I'm staying here with my friends and my influences that I have. You cannot force me on that plane. If you try and get me on that plane, I'm going to fight you. I am not going back. And he stayed in Canada at 16 years old and surrounded himself with bad influences, and he became like a Canada criminal which compared to American criminals is not that bad. But in Canada, he was notorious. He would, his, his, his thug name was KB, or no, 2K. And he would spray paint 2K everywhere, all over uh, his city of Lacombe. And he, he spray painted the cop cars. He went to the police station, spray painted cop cars. And he went and he broke into places. It did breaking and entering. They stole a $2 million yacht and drove it around and brought it back. And fortunately, were not caught or arrested. But he did all kinds of bad things. And he developed a reputation as that thug. He was influenced to be this person. And that is exactly who he became. And he was influenced. And he continued to watch his life deteriorate, and he made worse and worse decisions. And his brother, one time, my, my best friend, uh, Josh, was pulled over by a cop one time. And when the cop read his license, like, are you related to Caleb Bloomfield? And was like so mad and started yelling at him about how crazy his brother was because he had a reputation in that town and all the cops knew him. And he went out, and this was a, a young man that was raised in the church, and he got a girl pregnant when she was 14 years old, and he was 16, and they had to give the child up for adoption, and he was involved in drugs and, and craziness. And then one day, he had been influenced so far that he said that he was literally at rock bottom. He was sitting in a bar, drunk and high, sitting there. Just thinking about how terrible his life had gotten and how low he had fallen and thinking about how miserable he was and how he didn't have anywhere else to go at this point because he had been influenced so much that he had fallen and hit rock bottom. He's like, there's nowhere else for me to go. And as he was sitting there at that bar, a phone rang and they handed the phone to him and it was somebody on the other line saying, listen, I don't know who you are. I don't know this number. I don't know why I called this number, but I felt God tell me to call this number so that I can tell you, you feel like you're at the bottom, but God says there's a place for you to go and that place is home. You need to go home. And after that phone call, my friend Caleb ran back to God, ran back to God. I want to show you guys a, a picture of him. He's married now. I'll show you a picture of him and his wife. That's him and his wife, Sarah. 
This is the girl that he got pregnant when she was 14 years old. And they had to give up that child for adoption. They're not allowed to raise that child. But now she's pregnant. Again, they're married and they're pregnant with their next child. It was going to be a daughter. She's due to give birth in just a couple of weeks. And they're going to name the girl Mercy because of the mercy that God has shown them. And it's an amazing story, you guys, of somebody that allowed influence to corrupt their good morals. And they allowed influence to corrupt their good morals. But isn't it amazing how God can influence you once more? All of us are being influenced. All of us. If I were to ask Caleb as a little child, do you think you'll ever go to this place or do these things? He would have told you, absolutely not. But it, took all, it started with music. And music influenced him. And then friends continued to influence him. And he never would have thought that possible. But influence will take you places that you never thought you would ever go. All of us are being influenced. It's just a matter of by whom. Proverbs 13, 20 says, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but a companion of fools will suffer harm. Who do you want to become? Who do you want to become? Do you want to be a companion of fools? Or do you, be, you want to be around wise people and become wise? I'm telling you, in my life, you guys, one of the best decisions I ever made was I started looking at people who had the lives that I wanted to emulate, and I started getting near them and asking questions. How do you do that? If I saw somebody that was a good husband, I would, I would watch them. I'd come around them. I'd say, how do, you, how do you treat your wife in that way? I want to learn that. If I saw somebody who was a good parent, I'm like, how do, you, how do you discipline your children? How do you make sure that they behave that way? I want to learn that characteristic. If I, if I saw somebody who was a good pastor, I'd go up and say, well, how did you learn that? How did you get to this place? What lessons is God teaching you? Because I don't want to walk in the path of the fool and become a fool. I want to walk in the path of the wise and become wise. Who do you want to be influenced by, church? Who do you want to be influenced by? Who do you want to become? Who do you want to become? You want to become like that person that you listen to on the radio? That's the end result. That's the end result. That's the li they, they tell you a lie to deceive yourself into thinking that this is a glorious lifestyle. It's not. It ends in destruction. Who do you want to become? Find somebody that embodies that and hang out with them. Find somebody that is who you want to become and spend time. But they never invite me anywhere. Invite yourself. <laughs> Hang out with them. Amen? Amen? They never tell me. They went to the mall the other day and I didn't get to go. Did you ask? Amen. No, that's rude. Who cares? You want to be wise? You might have to be a little annoying to get there. <laughs> but that's all right. Because people will like you better once you're wise. And then when you're wise, you know how to do it without being annoying, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Find the people that embody who you want to be and get around them. Young ladies, you see somebody that is a, a wife and a mother and you want to have their characteristics, go to their house. Wash dishes with them. Change your diaper with them. Learn how to do it. Young men, you see somebody that is going and providing for his family. Say, man, can you teach me some work ethic? Amen? Man, I want to be like you. Stop hanging around with the people that you do not want to be. Hang around with the people that you want to become like because you will be who you hang out with. Influences around you will influence you. Do not be deceived. Even the Apostle Paul said, pattern your life after mine. Why did he say that? Because he knew that he was living a life that glorified God, that moved in a direction that brought him closer to the plan and the glory and the life that God had for him. He said, listen, I'm doing this, so allow me to influence you. Get around me. Watch me. Observe me. Follow me. Pattern your lives after mine. Find somebody that is following God, that has the family that you want to have, that loves their children the way that you want to love your children. The way that they love God is something that inspires you. Find that person and put yourself next to them like a shadow. Staple your foot to their foot. It will hurt for a while, but you'll learn something in the process. Find somebody who is living the life that you want to live, that you want to influence you, and pattern your lives after after theirs. Amen? Amen? Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals, but man, good morals can also corrupt bad morals. Are you with me? 
Find somebody that is living for God, that is doing what you want to be doing, that is existing the way you want to exist. Get near them and pattern your life after theirs. In closing, I want us to read a passage of scripture. And you know what? I want you guys to just bow your head and close your eyes as I read this because I want us to really focus on the words. This is found in Psalm chapter 1. This is actually the entire chapter of Psalm 1. I promise it's short. But the, the Psalms are called wisdom literature. So it's interesting to me that the wisdom literature opens up with the very first chapter being about influence. Bear that in mind. Psalm chapter 1 says this, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law. Read that the influence of the Lord. Meditating on it day and night. They're like trees that are planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all that they do, but not the wicked. They're like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners have no place among the godly, for the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Blessed is he who follows the Lord, who does not stand in the path of the wicked or join in with mockers. But the law, but the influence of the Lord is his delight. He's like a tree that's planted by the water. Don't you guys want that? What sounds more appealing to you this morning? What sounds more appealing? This morning, I want to ask you a question just really briefly, man. Is there anybody in here who has not been influenced by the saving grace of Jesus Christ? You do not have a relationship with Jesus. He is not your personal Lord and Savior. You would not identify yourself perhaps as a child of God, and you would like to make that commitment this morning and say, I want to be influenced by God in my life. I want my life to belong to Him. I want you to raise your hands this morning and say, Pastor Daniel, that's me, and I would like God to begin to influence my life. Anybody at all, that's you. Raise your hand, anybody, church? And now I want to talk to the rest of you guys this morning. Blessed is he who follows the Lord, who follows, who delights in his influence, who does not walk in the path of the sinner or join in with the mocker. I want to ask you this morning, church, to be honest with yourselves and say, man, have I allowed myself to be influenced? Am I walking in the path of the sinner? Am I joining in with the mockers? Am I watching stuff on my computer that influences my heart against God, against my spouse? Am I saying words that God would not be pleased with? Am I allowing the mouth that God gave me to speak blessings to speak curses? The voice that God gave me to raise in praise, am I allowing it to be influenced, to be raised in anger? Am I going to leave this church building after lifting my hands and go back into the world and be influenced by it? Am I going to conform to this world or am I going to allow God to transform my mind? Which influence do you choose this morning, church? Which influence? I want to ask, I mean, this is not an admission of how much you've influenced, you've been influenced, but this is an admission that you want to be influenced by God and God alone. I want you to stand up and say, I want to be influenced by God and God alone. I want you to stand up and say, I want to be influenced by God and God alone. I want to be he that is blessed because I walk in the path that God has set before me who is delighted in the influence of God and meditates on it day and night. I want to be influenced by God. I want God's spirit to be all that I need. I want to give you a challenge this morning, church. Two things 
If you want to be influenced by God, you got to be surrounded by God. Remember that rule that I said earlier, the law of averages? You are the average of the top five people that you spend the most time with. How many guys would be honest and say that God is not the top five people you spend the most time with? Be honest. I read a verse a night. I read a chapter a night. I pray for five minutes a day. Wow. The dude at Starbucks gets more time with you than God does. I want to give you two challenges. Number one, elevate God to that primary position in your life. The highest influence in your life. That you meditate on his influence day and night. Now what does that mean? I, I mean, obviously we can't read the Bible from morning to night. But man, when we read something, when you read that chapter and you go throughout your day, man, you're thinking about that chapter all day long. God, speak to me through that word that I read this morning. God, you're good. God, you're good. Amen? Elevate God to that primary influence. The second challenge I want to issue you this morning is find somebody who is about that life, who is living that life, and get up next to them. Find that person. Become their shadow. Surround yourself with positive influences. I don't care if they don't call you. You call them. Amen? Amen? I'm here to tell you, you guys, like, there's a lot of people in this church, I can't think to call up everybody and say, hey, you want to get lunch today? I can't. I couldn't even if I wanted to. Even the people that I'm closest to, sometimes they get overlooked. But man, if any of you guys ever call me and say, hey, Pastor Daniel, can we get together sometime? Can we get lunch or something? I'll find a time to make that happen. Pastor Larry's exactly the same way. Brother Richard, man, any of the mature Christian, I think... There's a lot of mature Christian people in this room. There's a lot of people that you can pattern your lives after and do well. Just get near them. Elevate God to that primary position and surround yourselves with godly influences. And the people in your life that are living lives that you don't want to emulate, you better influence them. But do not be deceived. If they're influencing you, you need to get away quick. I want you guys to close your eyes this morning. I want you to lift your hands. I want you to say, God, influence me. God, influence me. Holy Spirit, come upon me. Influence me, God. Change my life, God. Pattern my life after your son, after Jesus. God, do not allow me to conform myself to this world, God. Transform my mind right now. God, I do not want to be deceived. God, right now I ask you that you will break the chains of deception that are upon people's lives. That you will break the chains of deceptions that are upon people's lives. God, that people that are in this place that are deceived, that will walk out of this room and engage in things that they know that they, they ought not to, God, that you will stop them. That you will help them to realize, God, that that, sh that movie they're about to watch is going to fill their heart with some nonsense. God, that those words that they're about to say is going to uh, harden their heart against the love that you would like to pour into it, Lord. God, that people will be awakened to the fact that we have been deceived and we will no longer be deceived, God. That just like you deal with my friend Caleb, that you will call us, God, at rock bottom, God, or even before we get there, Lord, and you will let us know that we are able to come home. That we are able to come home. That we are not so far gone. That we are not so deceived that your life cannot, your light cannot pierce the darkness, God. God, allow us to be influenced by you and by you alone. In Jesus' precious name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody in this church said amen. The tendency of people on a Sunday morning is the minute that church is dismissed, you guys leave you get into a car, you drive away. Don't do that today. These people in this room are your brothers and sisters in Christ. You should surround yourself with them. Not all of them are perfect. Amen? <laughs> Amen? Amen. But start surrounding yourself with them. And all of you guys moving towards Christ are going to influence each other to move closer and closer to Christ. Don't dart out this morning. You have an extra 30 minutes to spare. I promise lunch can wait. Find somebody. Be a little annoying today. Hi, I don't know you. This is my name. We should hang out. Very easy.
Can we do that this morning? Can we meet new influences today? Amen? I don't believe y'all are going to do it. I believe the four people said amen are going to try. I'm really encouraging you guys to try. It's your family. It's your home. Surround yourself with your family. And continue to motivate each other and push each other towards being influenced by God.